call it 5.30 even if it's 5.29? Sure thing. It's not 5.30. Okay, not 5.30. All right. So, uh, first order of business is to review and approve <coughs> the minutes of December 11th. Um, I was not here. That states that. So. Yep. Mm -hmm. I make a motion to approve the minutes from December 11th. Yeah. Second. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Unanimous. Um, we start a business financial statement and awards. Shall we pass on that for so now? Just, yeah, put yeah. a hold on that. Okay. So. Okay. Here you go. Um, give us a couple minutes. Give us a second. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. You've already gotten to you, so as soon as you're ready, you're going to go. Oh, okay. Right. <laughs> yeah. There's a game. It's 529. Oh, okay. What's that? Is that a public comment? Yeah. Is that going to open up the plans for me? Uh, well, okay. It's fine. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Should we go straight to the winner? Give Mark a chance to settle in. Okay. So, uh, any public comment tonight? Um, I see that we have Mr. Olmstead here who's. Okay. Got some things to say, but is there anybody else from the public? No? Most of the finance Right. Okay. Great. So I'm going to turn it over to you, Skip, if you want to. Oh, can, can I ask, since I think I know most people here, but I don't know anybody. Sure. <coughs> so, if we go, <coughs> so if we go around, we'll more than happy to introduce ourselves over here. <coughs> Before I start, though, I just want to say that, you know, if during the discussion you decide you want to throw something at us, to, to get him back there, you need to lob it. <laughs> we can do okay. that. I can reach yeah. okay. uh, Skip Olmsted, I'm chairman of the Finance Committee. Bruce Hunter, Clark. John Pereski, Finance Committee. And Capital Improvement Planning. Jeff Upton, Finance Committee and Capital Improvement Committee. Allison Vandermelden, Finance Committee. Darius Modesto, superintendent. And we got smaller water bottles, so <laughs> that might have been because of the fear of the throwing. Uh, so we won't get too wet. <laughs> well, thank you. Ken Cutter back, school committee. David Sharp, school committee. Jan Flosko, school committee. Trevor McDaniel, school committee. Mary Raymond, school committee. Carol Levy, assistant principal. Tina Jen, principal. Mark. Mark Chapulis, uh, business manager for TMS. And Kathy Dorval. Yep. Hey, Might as well introduce yourself, too. <laughs> good to see you. So it's always good to try to start a meeting with a little levity since I've got to start with my you remember seeing this? Yeah. this mayor mayor no need for library override nine million dollar project or something like that and then then there was this one today I thought this one was a better one yes mayor says library won't affect tax rate like school committee says our budget won't affect the tax rate <laughs> In any event, we, I'm going to pass a few things out. Let's start with this one. We'll go through it. And then I'll tell you what. Yes, sir. <clears throat> very, very briefly, uh, I spent quite a few years on, on this given school committee. And it always seems to be a certain amount of contention between the school committee and, and the selectmen and finance committee. and. I don't know that that's necessarily going to go away, but at least maybe if everybody has the same information to start from. Um, was there enough? Yes. Good. Then, you know, maybe we can kind of re reduce that tension a little bit. So that first thing that I handed out that you got, this is, there are essentially three areas where towns in Massachusetts get their revenue. And so on this page, this gives you a 10-year breakdown. And, it's, and it only goes up through 2018 because we're in 2019 and we don't have that information, to be honest with you. Uh, the first part of it talks about property tax um, and debt exclusion. Everybody know what a debt exclusion is? Sort of. Anybody who doesn't, basically what a debt exclusion is, is, it says, look, 
we've got a project of some sort it's going to take so many years to do and uh, we would like to be able to pay for it you can go through an override and pay for it but at the end of it we want to stop the taxes from coming in so what we're going to do is we're going to pass have the towns pass this piece of town law whatever you want to call it it says for this particular project the principal and the interest payments can be added on to the taxes after you make the calculation for the new tax rate. So it does affect the tax rate, contrary to what the mayor thinks. Uh, <clears throat> and it's, but it's, it's above and beyond the, the, uh, the limit set by Prop 2.5. And, and I'll pass out another piece of paper later. So in addition to that, we have what we call local receipts. And uh, there, those. This is another batch of, of funds. And again, ten years worth of history. Motor vehicle excise tax tends to be far and away, the, by far and away, the largest. Uh, you will notice that there's something called licenses and permits. And I'm pretty sure that those are. We, they they have been fairly heavy at times. And I believe that included in that. You can correct me from wrong. Are the uh, fees that we charge the town charges for construction? So there's been a lot of construction, and, and uh, Ken will will let you know that the town and, and uh, the Met have had some discussions or difficulties in the in the fees that we charge for construction. So that's why those are high. What I want to point out there while we're looking at it. If you look at the bottom line, start, you don't have to start 2009, but just start 2018 and work back. These are actual dollars that came in. 2.2 million in, in 2018, 2.4 million in 2017, and then look at 2016, 1.9 million. There's a $500,000 difference between 2016 and 2017. So that's a that's a problem that we face. We're you know we're trying to we say you know, budgets two and a half percent, three percent, whatever, but then we run into problems like this. So it is a diff it is difficult. The next <coughs> one, state aid. Revenues versus charges. Not in, as I understand it, from what I'm told, the revenues include chapter seventy. Uh, and charges, those are the charges that, there are some charges that that we get hit for that, you know, they give us the money and immediately take it away. And if you'll notice, in 2009, we brought, had 1.8 million in uh, state aid, net, and it's been downhill ever since. And then the totals, uh, again, the debt, we talked about excluded debt or debt exclusions. That right now, there are two items that are debt excluded. There's the highway garage and the school roof. Uh, and if you want to know what those are, the highway garage is about 250,000, 245,000 a year for 20 years. That's the principal. And then the interest obviously changes every year, but it's about 120,000. The school roof is $100,000 a year and the interest charge is about $12,000 a year. So that's what those are. Any questions on that? Anybody else want to chime in? Back page. Uh, one of the problems that we have is that we only have data for, for uh, or the most recent data that we have is 2018. We don't know what we're going to bring in, in total in taxes for 2019. We don't know exactly what the local receipts are going to be either, and obviously 2000, uh, 2019 state aid. We don't. We haven't gotten the money yet. We're told what it is, but it does change. And uh, we have had situations where the governor has—I don't know what the word is that they use—but held back some of that state aid. <clears throat> so we're working now in 2019. We have to put a budget together for 2020, and it's kind of like good luck. So essentially, in an effort to, 
try to figure that out, uh, I used my trusty TI-83, I know they use TI-84s now, and uh, did a little calculation, and calculation, so linear regression, and I've calculated what, based on these 10 years, what we call a best fit line. So I told Darius the other run this past his Algebra 2 teacher up there, and let him verify it or, or blow this out of the water, one or the other. Uh, and essentially what it, what it tells us is that on an average, the, I set this up as a linear, as, a, as math major and math teacher, I set this up to look like a linear equation. M is slope, uh, B is the, the y-intercept. That would be the number for the year 2000. Uh, and M is the change that takes place every year. It's a linear equation so that it's gonna be the same. In other words, on an annual basis, our tax revenues, ex not, without a debt exclusion, you know, leave those aside, are increasing by about 350,000 a year. Local receipts are increasing by about 92,000 a year. You saw the situation where we had a change of 500,000 in one year. So it's all over the place, but. And then state aid, it's going down uh, by about 42,000 a year. Add them up and uh, what we're looking at in total for the current year from these three areas, not excluding, but not including uh, debt exclusions, which are four to 500,000 in addition to that. It's 14.3 or 14.7, depending on the year, <coughs> million dollars. Eddie, is that? Go with it. And then, Yep. There's always the there's always the one that talks about free cash. So let's talk about free cash. There's two things that I I'm just going to pass these out. Uh, this will take about 30 seconds. Can't get that stuff past me. And again, these are, this is actual data, and this is a data as of uh, the first of the fiscal year. So for this, for the, this budget year, which is the FY 2020, our free cash position at the beginning of the, this fiscal year was $1.3 million. You can see this does the same thing that local receipts do. It bounces all over, too. Could you just explain specifically in two or three sentences what free cash is exactly? That's, is it fair to say that's money that's in the bank that we're starting the year off with before all of these revenues come in for the rest of the year? Is that yep. the way of putting it? That's what's in your savings account? Yeah. I'm going to let somebody else shine. Is there a way to say that? Anybody? Yeah, I think you can say that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it, can be, it, can be, it can be used to help with the budget. Yeah. Or capital expenditures so far. Well, so we are you call question. over taxation, some yeah, people would think. Or, or the approval of your budget, or conservative budget, budget yeah. Okay, yeah. Well, okay. Well, I just want question, to clarify what that is. question is, where's it come, come from? That's what I was going to say. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Oh. I, basically, because of the situation with local receipts, we try to put aside some free cash to cover those situations where we get that drop. Mm -hmm. uh, a half a million dollars, sometimes more, sometimes a little less. So if it was free cash, if we had that in free cash at the end of the year, it's available the next year when they get around to certify. It's part of the free cash figure. In addition to it, uh, <coughs> money that uh, we don't spend that was budgeted, that ends up in free cash. Where else? There are a couple of other areas. The inspection and permits fees. The, the biggest one 
is where we have, with our local receipts, so for this past year, I think we estimated what? That we were gonna bring in about $1.8 million or something, and we brought in 2.2, 2.3. So there was actually $500,000 more that came in. We try to be very conservative. That. So that, along with what we carried over, and so that's primarily where it comes from. Um, Protecting us. Yeah. Uh, you, you can also get the situation where where you needed a few bucks and and uh, so you were you were a little less frugal and then your local receipts took a dive mm -hmm. and you anticipated they're going to be up so all of a sudden free cash is down. So if you look, we started a few years back or ten years ago with about seven hundred thousand dollars that year, and then it was up and down. Uh, and we put last year we put quite a bit of that into stabilization for yeah the because we had coming right building up so we want to make sure that we knew we had sewer work to do and a lot of projects yes. coming forward so we took some of that put in capital stabilization so we so also we would have put a total of a half a million dollars yes. in stabilization okay well, over the last that, two years that just no begs question. another question and then we'll be done. Right. so there is another fund with the you just reference called yes. the stabilization fund. Correct. Yep. Which yeah. is what? That's money that the town uses to, and it needs a two-third vote from from um, that town meeting. So if you have, uh, and you usually use it for, you could use it for quite a bit of things, but usually they're used for capital projects. So if you if you have, um, you know, a truck that breaks down and you need to, you were you hadn't budgeted that, but you need to you need to get a truck out there to plow the streets. You could. You could get the town to do a two-thirds vote on that, pull that money, and 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 pay for that. Or if you want to start, you know, putting money aside for a larger capital project, or if you have a, a year where like, like you didn't budget really well and you've got you know <coughs> capital seats dropped off, you had you had to cover something. Uh, something goes wrong at the <coughs> school here. Or, so you say you whatever. Need, can I, I'm sorry to interrupt, mm -hmm. but you need a two-thirds vote to move money from stabilization. Yes, you need, you need but, a two-thirds vote of town meeting to move. Okay, money but but yet we are putting money into a stabilization fund because we want to use it for a specific purpose. Correct. So well, you're, not, you're specific, not, not specific, not specific purpose for for the either rainy day or yeah. something catastrophic or something large that the town needs to needs to tackle. Like it's a savings account. Yeah, savings account. Okay, yeah. but essentially but you've got two to votes to, before you can. Get you it hard. Yeah, you want it. You want it hard to get at because okay. you don't want people just going, "Oh, well, we've got all this money here. Let's just spend it on this." You want to have a serious need for it to go back and get it. The last time I remember taking money out of free cash is when we built. Uh, well, hold on. The highway garage. Okay. Yeah. Just stabilization. You mean Excuse me. Stabilization. Okay. Stabilization. Okay. Yeah. Stabilization. Yeah. We took. The highway garage cost us six million dollars. Uh, we paid a million of that from stabilization. We had a little over two million in stabilization. That dropped stabilization down to one million. Stabilization is, is what it says. Stable is to stabilize probably the tax rate or whatever. Mm -hmm. but, uh, and so what uh, would be in the stabilization fund now? Uh, one and a half million dollars, maybe slightly more. We have two stabilizations. One is general stabilization. The other one is what we call capital stabilization intended for capital projects that not not large capital projects but smaller ones but the truck i think was the yeah. and so that that's the intent uh could that change i'm sure it can it takes two-thirds vote and i don't know that there's any restriction uh, on on what you can use the money well, if you take the money out how you can use the money and so one more time, is it a town meeting vote that puts yes. in yes. stabilization? Yes. And yes. a town meeting vote that takes it out? Correct. Correct. So yes. at town meeting every year, is there, is there an, uh, an article where we are taking free cash and putting it away into stabilization? Yes, and taking free cash to pay Sometimes. for capital projects. Because you'll hear, you know, I, you know, I move to take from free cash stabilization or, you know, tax, tax and, you know, or appropriation. Go ahead, Bruce. Uh, but but that takes a 50% vote to get right. it into stabilization. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, two thirds to get it out. But we've only put money in um, the general stabilization, I think, not in the last couple of years. Right. 
because we haven't had any excess. We've had to use free cash to balance the budget. Which we use a lot. So what we did last year was to put it in um, a capital stabilization account in the year before. So that now has a half million dollars in it. The general stabilization has about a million, but we haven't added to that in three, four yes. years? We split it last year. We did split it? Yeah. We ended up splitting it last year? Yeah. So okay. minimal amount of money goes in. For, for what we run out of money. We don't have enough to, to, to fund the $14 million budget, so we pull from free cash. To balance it, which is we'd like to get away from. We want to try and get away from. It. So what was happening previously is a lot of times, as you can attest to here in school, a lot of your capital projects got put off because you couldn't afford them, right. and that's what was happening with the town, and that's why there was a push to establish a separate capital stabilization fund because we have some big projects coming down. We're well aware that they're coming down and we only can tap free cash so much it's just going to run out so we were trying to be conservative and be prepared for the big ticket items coming down besides the smaller ones sure okay all right so sorry <coughs> good no i'm just we distracted you i think from the general overview no, where you're going no. so. it's fine that's the point okay. on this side i'm not going to go over this i just passed this out uh, you can all take a look at it in, on your own, and I think you can pretty clearly figure out how they go about setting the, what we're going to take for taxes. Mm -hmm. Take last year's tax at two and a half percent. That's last year's tax before debt exclusion. <coughs> Add two and a half percent. They get this number that they call uh, what do they call new it? growth? New growth. Mm -hmm. uh, and they add that to it, and then that's your new tax rate. So if you look down at the at number two, uh, it says t the tax levy from 2017, add two and a half percent, 250,000 plus, add new growth, 172,000. And uh, then you get a brand new total, uh, 10, 10,459,000. Do so what the ceiling is? And is that? I wouldn't get into it. I think we need yeah, to get into it. no, I was going to stay away from the ceiling, but. Uh, well, I was going to ask you about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, what these guys do? <coughs> what about the ceiling? I don't think we need to discuss it. There's so much room. Oh, David so just asked the question yeah. what is it? It's the, it's the most the town can tax based on the assessed values of the town. Right. Or what? You just can't. It's tax, the tax huh? rate. Well, we can tax. Yeah, so you hit we can't we can tax anymore. So there's many towns that are, that are just approaching their levy limit now where they have no room to raise. Like if we found we had two, we could raise them. Taxes by going to a two and a half people. override. Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. A two, and a two and a half. I believe a two and a half override has to stay under the tax levy. Yes. Essentially, what that is 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 you take whatever the basis for your tax rate is, and you multiply two and a half by two and a half percent. That's the that's the maximum tax rate that you can have. It's uh, two dollars and fifty cents or twenty five dollars a thousand, mm -hmm. and that's what that would be. Twenty five bucks a thousand. <clears throat> By the way, just if you want to know, Greenfield's tax rate is around twenty-three dollars, I think now, or thousand. Are you saying it's a state law that you can't tax more than twenty-five? That's exactly that's what, what I'm saying. saying. So right. that's yeah. what the ceiling comes that's, from. Okay. That's, that's what Proposition Two and a Half said. Okay. Yeah. And just quickly, so this number that you just come up with, you know, the ten four five nine, talking about levy limits, mm -hmm. yep. is that supposed to be theoretically the same number as the ten two eight two from the top line of your? Revenues, net of excluded debt for 218. Top right of your big, the other yeah, side. Yeah, it should be yeah. some place. Yeah, pretty close to that. Yeah. Right? I mean, I know it's, it's off probably a less, bit. It's probably less um, growth or two and a half or something. I'm trying right. To yeah. But those are theoretically the right. same numbers. Right, pretty close. Property tax yeah. revenue. Yeah. We, didn't, we didn't sure. tax as much as we could. Right. Okay. We'll always leave a little bit. 
That's yeah. not a lot this year, but yep. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> All right, great. Well, personally, the assessors no. actually do all that. Sorry? Yeah, the assessors. The assessors. The assessors. Yeah. 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 So the last one that I was going to pass up, and you can, I'm going to let you ask questions about this rather than really talk too much about it. What, what we had asked town accountant to do was to go through and take what we voted at town meeting last April for all the departments and then add to that some amount she picked 2.8 percent mm -hmm. so you can see what 2.8 percent increase in budgets would do um, and that's that's everything that we voted at town meeting the first two pages are what we what we call the omnibus budget mm -hmm. and then the, the third page are those uh, those articles that were voted, uh, it says voted separately. So some of the stuff on that second one are like the sewer and, and that's, um, that's kind of separate from the budget. It gets but it's done, we gotta be able to take it. And, and we do, and it's kind of separate from that 15 million because yeah, we, we, we charge you sewer user fees and it goes into an enterprise fund, so it so kind of wipes out. So sewer, sewer department gets no tax money. But they get a sewer user fees. Yep. Okay. But those are also voted at town meeting. So, for example, if you looked on the second page where it says debt service, the first item is maturing debt. What's the amount that we're paying on principal? The second item, interest on maturing debt, as it says, is uh, the interest that we would pay on maturing debt. Most of that, not all of it, most of that uh, is, uh, are the debt exclusions, the roof and uh, the highway garage. Mm -hmm. I gave you the, there's, there's, a, there's the so-called Oxford, Oxford property. That's the other piece that we're paying on. It's included there. And the big drop of 300,000 from 18 to 19 was that? School the roof. This, the drop. Well, hey, what, ha what happened was, if I remember correctly, what, we paid a year and a half's worth of principal in one year. It, yeah. it all fell in one year. Oh, okay. It was just the way that the note. And then we did pay off uh, some of the Oscar property as well. Yes. Well, yeah, that doesn't show anywhere. Oh, that was this year, and that hasn't shown any. I see. <coughs> there was there was something else that we did pay up. Oh, Siemens loan. Siemens loan. That's right. So I think that was in 2018, but I'm not. I mean, yeah, 2018. Yeah, so I think that's part of it. 257,000. Yeah. So I think that's part of that 720,000, and it then dropped down to 440,000. <coughs> but don't don't hold me to that. That's just my. Record. I believe you're correct. It's good. In any event, my hope is that this will give you some idea of what we're looking at, uh, and uh, the uh, again bottom line. If you look at the bottom line, uh, last year we spent 16 million dollars. Of that, 500 thousand went into stabilization. So it really was closer to 15,500,000. Um, mm. million 15,600,000. Where are you getting the figure? Oh, last page. Last page. Last page. Yeah, I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. Yeah. 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 And, if you, and if you go up from that, so this FY 2019, let me point out, FY 2017 and FY 2018, those are actual expenditures. The FY 2019 and 20, figure is what we voted at town meeting and FY 2020 is a projection based on the 2.8 percent increase with the exception of the back page here. Then without any capital. Yeah. That's why it looks like it's half a million less. Yeah. So yeah and so I the other thing is I went to this page over here and it said 
Well, look, I've got $14.7 million here on this. Avail I guess available. Available. To that, I can add the debt exclusions, which are about 400000 So it's a little over 15, 15, 1, 15, 2. Uh, this 15, 5 over here is absent any capital requests and a few other items that, that you don't see dollars in here for that will be dollars. So we're tight. It's tight. Mm -hmm. and, and as I mentioned, I. Maybe I didn't make it clear. Because of the situation with local receipts bouncing all over the place, we do like to take some of that free cash and kind of squirrel it aside and say we're not going to spend half a million dollars. So that we uh, so that we have that available if push comes to shove and we and we, our local receipts go to hell. Uh -huh. Can I add to that? You can. Well, it's tight at two point, assuming a 2.8% increase. Mm -hmm. If you go above that, it's going to be even tighter. Right. So that's <clears throat> obviously, I guess. <clears throat> okay, well, thank you. Yeah, very helpful. Personally, yeah, that's, you made me a much more educated uh, town meeting that's voter. Right. That's the goal. So if that was the goal, that's great. Um, yeah. But so, also, it definitely helps with our process. Sure. So, how do we get Bill to come down here and, and show us how we can save money and not have to raise taxes? Yeah, let's, we'll call him up. Well, oh, he's just getting rid of some debt. Get a, if he can get a free library built up there, we should definitely bring him down here. To get yeah, we got a free library. Yeah. It seems to me he's not running again this year. Who <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> oh, knows? Um, anybody have any questions for our wonderful finance committee? Or? Thank you. Thank you for that. I really yeah. appreciate it. I was going to say thank you for calling us wonderful. I think we've called lots of things, but wonderful. <laughs> no, I mean, you said there was all kinds of tension. I don't remember that much tension. Well, there can be. Um, <laughs> Maybe I'm not in the right room. <laughs> uh, no, 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 there really isn't. No, and I'm glad. It's it's really has been nice to have a good good working okay. relationship and. Um, and I've seen <coughs> this presentation. Maybe this is my third time, and uh, it's. You know, it takes a little time. Every time it sinks in a little bit more and more, but it, it's a lot to take in for an average person. And um, as you're, you know, trying to figure out where we, you know, we are average people. We are yeah. average people. I'm certainly an average person, but um, and and I think of all the other things that need to happen in town, other than uh, as well as as important as educating our kids and building a future for our society with educating our kids. It's um, you know, we we also have sewer and we have you know. Capital projects we're looking at at both of these buildings, and um, so it takes a lot. It takes a lot. So it's very helpful to understand where your limit is and what what you have to work with. You wish there was an endless pot that you could go to and say, "Hey, this, we're going to do this this year," but we're constrained. So, and it's only members of the board of it's only the board of selectmen who can put overrides on the uh, town meeting floor. So don't look at us for overrides. <laughs> okay, right. Don't look at me. That's your understanding. I, I think it is. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to bring that up. <laughs> okay, so with that, there are no more questions. We'll no. I think we're yeah, that was very helpful. Thank you so much. Thank you very much yep. for having us. Appreciate it. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Mark to the financial statements and the warrants. Yeah. Sure. So you have in front of you warrants uh, totaling ninety-seven thousand two hundred eighty-six dollars and seventy-nine cents, and that would be a total of six warrants. You said I'm sorry. That note was ninety-seven thousand two two eighty-six. Yep, seventy-nine cents. Thank you. Uh, 
Um, and also, I gave you a copy of the emailed budget for Deerfield through December 31st. Um, year to date, the budget is tracking to plan. If you notice, um, the only areas where we have overages or where we would expect to have overages, which are um, in the um, substitute lines for the long term subs and for the spent subs. And through the course of the year, generally what happens is we'll make an adjustment because the sub is covering for um, an employee who is not being paid, so there's money in the salary line that we can adjust for the sub. Mm -hmm. And so you also have <clears throat> attached to this, you have the general fund budget and also the school choice budget and how that is tracking. <coughs> and that is currently tracking according to plan, a little bit under budget, um, as well as the LEAP program tuitions in the early childhood. Any questions on the budget? Not hearing any. Okay. We the other document that I gave you is um, the proposed, it's basically the budget document we use to prepare the budget for FY20. Um, we, we call, we'd like to take what we call as an all funds approach, which is kind of melding together what you see in these documents for FY18, which is the general fund budget, but obviously that doesn't fund everything in the school. Um, these are a couple pages out of the budget because we're in the process of building it. But if you look at the first page, you can see we have the salary lines and the proposed budget for FY20, and we have two columns. We have the proposed budget in blue for FY20, and then we have the all funds proposed budget. And if you look to, to the right of that, you can see several columns. We have school choice, we have circuit breaker, sped revolving, the, the entitlement grants. So when we go through the budget building process, rather than looking at these as independent, we look at it as a cohesive process because everybody that's being paid is being paid from somewhere. Not everybody's being paid from the general fund. Right. So in order to keep everything cohesive and be able to um, track the budget and make sure spending is on track, what we do is we align expenses as they are budgeted in both the general fund and then the other funds that are, are supporting the general fund. Um, and then we move forward doing that. We're in the process of, we have the, the teachers updated for steps in this budget, so that's one of the steps we've taken. We've, um, we've made an assumption on changes to the sub rate. Um, we've put in one of the retirements we know of. There's another one that, that might be forthcoming. Um, and then we're working on getting utilities uh, updates. And the other issue we have is we'll be going out for a bus contract, which will also mm -hmm. impact this. But we're pulling all the pieces together um, for the budget for 2020. Thank you. Any questions on that? One question. Do you have glasses? This yeah. is that for RSD. <laughs> Frontier or is it your magnifying glass? Oh, it's the FRSD. You mean that's only about the glasses? Yeah, it says DES. DES in the blue line? Yeah, glasses. No, you can't do your glasses. It's just like that. And it's not you. It's the type is getting small. But you don't get bigger paper. Okay. FRSD. Well, you know, we copy when we build these know. things, so we'll make that fix. Thank you. Oh, there it is. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Found a little bit. <laughs> There's nothing original under the sun here. <laughs> and are we projecting five hundred thousand dollars in school choice? That's taken from this year. Um, that's a discussion that we're going to have to be had because we have to look at the um, how school choice is tracking this year and what we're looking to project in terms of students for next year. So as we, we finalize this process, that number may change. Those those numbers are not updated yet. Okay. And there would be just one question or request as we go through this is, and look at school choice um, and a projection of revenues that I noticed and the uh, population projection we had that there's 18 school choice going out. So that's kind of an offset we've never really taking into account as we budget it. I just wonder if, we, if there's some way to do that this year. Keep it in mind as we as we're budgeting. <clears throat> but I'm confused. You, I don't we, we always project when we have we sixth have, graders leaving and we have no I'm not talking about sixth graders leaving. Oh, I'm talking right. eighteen students that are enrolled in charter or other schools outside the district. Mm -hmm. So we have school choice students yep, in, going from Deerfield to other districts. And so that would sort of be an offset to the 82 that we have coming in. Oh, I see what you're saying. We okay. had roughly, and we could use 18 as the number, even though we're paying more to the charter schools, but at least we get a sense 
on the school choice side what the impact is. Okay. So our, it's sort of trying to use a net school choice number because we get school choice revenues. Mm -hmm. The town doesn't, and the school choice comes directly to us. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the town pays the money mm -hmm. for the school wow. choice students that go out. Right. So, okay. If you want to change that, you could do that. What's you want that? You want to change that? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. You can, the town can continue to pay, but I think uh -huh. we should try and account for it in the uh, school choice numbers issue. Yes, if it works out. Yep. <clears throat> Yeah, there's some data here for sure. Can I just ask a question on those retirement budgets? Are those, those are, that's a line item for anticipated um, payouts? Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. <coughs> okay. Is this, are we coming back to uh, sort of presentation, the budget talk later? Or are we yeah, segue into this will now? Talk, you're going to talk a little bit tonight during the budget part. Sure. I don't want to just assume but that's what we're <laughs> okay, so we'll circle. We're, gonna run, we're likely going to circle back. I'm just letting the, I guess, the committee know where this is. You we did skip that. We skipped ahead. Skipped ahead for that part. But we're not, you want to go right into all of it right now, or would you like us to come back to it? Just keep going. Might as well keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Right stop and come back. I don't and think it's really a keep going on the budget thing. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so let's keep going with that. I'm just saying that only because I know that this is coming mm -hmm. down later on our agenda. But we can go right, right now. Yeah. So we're moving to to. Um, this year we're just bringing the lines across really we're not really looking to make a whole lot of changes um, thus far I think I made some small incremental changes of like moving a $500 thing here down um, from down into early childhood but that's not nowhere here or there the bigger thing that we're looking at is we have um, we're paying tuition out. We have uh, some of the tuition outline because mm -hmm. they're moving up to the middle school, so Frontier will be handle, uh, taking care of that. And we have a lot of needs. You, you, you know, we've been talking mm -hmm. about the social emotional needs. Yes. And we're looking at maybe transferring that money or having a conversation about where we can find some funding for a social emotional uh, program where we can service uh, more students um, and meet the needs of the kids here <coughs> in Deerfield so that we don't have to send them out. We keep them in the home district. And you're still seeing that trend yes. for the lower yeah. low grades coming in. Yeah. So that's our We've had that kind of, um, that cycle kind of, is, that trend has been going on for the, for the last four years anyways. If not, I mean, I'm sure it's been going on for a long time, but um, yeah. we've been at noticing a lot more at least. Yeah. Right. Um, are we, are you noticing, um, are we doing a good job kind of catching them up as they start to get through those grades mm -hmm. so that by the time they get to fifth and fourth or fifth, mm -hmm. I'm just thinking of the time I've been looking at it. I know we're putting a lot of, a lot of work to it. There could always be more resources for that. <coughs> are, we getting, um, are we getting ahead of the curve as they start <coughs> to get up through those grades? Are they catching up to where they need to be? There's a lot of students that, um, come in and they require significant support right. and as they go on it is they are fading supports and they Good. are making progress and some of them that's are. the important part some of them actually there's a couple of students i'm thinking of that by grade two who've had like one-to-one -one support have no support in the that's classroom fantastic. and they have some consultation that's happening i mean and then there's other students that um progress a little bit uh, slower if you yeah will, sure and, um, have skills, but we're seeing a lot more um, the, of the students getting the skills quicker and being able to kind of fade back that support. Um, that's great. I mean, that's really yeah. the goal, and I know it's a lot of hard work. Yeah. Thank you guys for doing that. <clears throat> Teachers and mm -hmm. um, instructional assistants are, uh, are key. Yeah, I know, to give that support. Yeah, and the social emotional program will just allow some fluidity so they can come in and out of the program. And, um, come out of the classroom to get that extra targeted intervention and then move back. Okay. In, in May, um, in, in other districts, that model has actually alleviated some of the IA support because there's more kids in one place. So, um, you know, IA can take, take students out at different times. So. Mm -hmm. 
looking at that. It's been effective in different, like larger districts, and yeah. I believe Frontier. Do you have you worked off of that model with that Frontier? Right, Sorry, now let's get back to your principal build, hat. <clears throat> you know, over the last ten years, Frontier has built programs to minimize the number of students going out, mm -hmm. and with the money savings, and then even sometimes an additional tuition student in from an area Correct. district um, to you know, we build a good program. Um, others. I um, want to take advantage of that. Yeah. So it's a model. So I think we're, you know, to jump on what Tina was saying, the idea right now, we're in that planning phase of this. That by no means is this the proposal to the school committee yep. now. Um, but that's what we're thinking about. And it is a, um, it's an issue I've seen across all the schools in our district. In the sense mm -hmm. of just the, the growing needs and also the growing identification of needs right. um, um, for younger students and trying to get their early interventions, um, not only for extreme needs, but even the, the, the smaller needs. The more we can do earlier. Um, it actually saves money as well. We're talking about money, and not, yeah. we talk about improving students. I don't mean to talk about it in a quantity of no, money, but it's you know, know in the end, the more, the more um, you can get them progress early on. Um, right, does a good job there. So, so we're gonna be, we're talking more about that and the idea of um, if we put such a program together with the staffing will look like, what that staffing ripple effect will have, in the sense of um, <clears throat> will. We will take current staffing numbers into that program, mm -hmm. um, or do we need to increase that? And so that's that's what you really want the answer to, right. whether or not you're increasing that and what kind of um, money is going to need to need to do that. So um, that's what we have to have that for you certainly by the next meeting. Um, okay. Not prior, so to speak. <clears throat> okay. Anything else? Just uh, not about budget sort of presentation. Where we're going early in that. Does someone want to speak to what we can expect, sort of, at the next meeting in terms of the budget process going forward? Sure. Um, and chime in if I break for wrong. So right now, um, you know, speaking for Judy, who's building um, other TMS representative for mm -hmm. those band, who's building an, uh, the Excel the the budget formula in which we're going to be able to plug numbers in. There's a lot of numbers we don't have. To plug in, mm -hmm. um, we don't have a governor's budget yet. Um, it's expected to come out the 23rd. Trevor was saying he's going to a conference next week. Maybe he'll start to give some hints because right. everybody Thank wants you. a little bit of information to be able to build budgets up. Mm -hmm. um, we're currently under um, we're doing a, a contract negotiation, so we don't have a, a number of when we talk about percentage or steps or that kind of stuff that's still being negotiated. So that's an unknown number. We're going to have to move forward with um, you know some. Some filler numbers and that kind of thing, and um, we'll have to approach that in a way to, um, you know, protect the negotiation sure. process, but sure. at the same time be able to build our budgets moving forward. Um, additionally, we also have to uh, a bus bid is currently yes. um, or is about to be underway, mm -hmm. so we're going to have that number as well. So there's a lot of different, a lot of moving parts, and a lot of mm -hmm. you know, as we get them, we're going to be dropping them in this mm -hmm. budget. The idea that we hope is that we're going to have faster turnaround because once you build this model right mm -hmm. the idea is that when we have to do any kind of change it's not going to have to I'm not going to send mark back to the computer for three days wait for it to come back out sure. we might be able to do a lot more live thing that's the that's the goal yeah okay. so that um, um we'll be able to move things a lot quicker once we start moving those numbers around and that bus contract is that a five-year contract do you know i remember um I don't think the last happen. one I, I'm going off of memory now. The right. last one now was, but right, um, it may not be then. Yeah, we're not sure. You know, and I was no. Um, we will build the specs of the. We will build the specs of the bid. Right. And so. It, and I was um, thinking. Um, <clears throat> you know, I, I remember conversations from other years of. Um, you know, I know we have to have large buses, and we always wind up with like a quarter of them full in, in certain areas, certain times, but. Um, you know, I wonder if there's a way to be, or, or if he, if whoever bids on that contract, a way to look at smaller, um, smaller vehicles like getting up under Eagle Brook, and you know that having to use multiple vans to go up there because of the underpass, and you know, there's, I don't know if there's just ways to look at that to try and bring that cost down because I know that we <coughs> have gigantic buses and they're mostly empty. Mostly empty. What so? That goes down a tricky road it because does. you're going to put you're putting a, you're putting a service that you need out to bid and how one chooses to provide that service according to your bid specs mm -hmm. are as such and so if you, the, the tighter you make your bid specs so if you want to make your bid specs to say we would like to see 
what do you say? We want to see 50 percent of our fleet in electric buses. Yeah, I mean, a wonderful sure. idea, sure. you know, but realistic, you, you're gonna not going to be able to get somebody to yeah. any but local who has that kind of money already in buses Correct. ready to go on a bid. But but it's that kind of thing where you say you got to be careful how you you want to make sure you get a bid that the school district can afford in its next budget cycle as well. Yeah. Um, at the same time, making progress to saving. <clears throat> If you're doing running smaller buses, hopefully you're saving the vendor money and you're saving the school Correct. district money. So yeah. it's kind of a mix of both, but you can only dictate so far yeah. when creating the Understood. Yes, so, I was just, I just correct remember me many right. conversations yeah. with that, <coughs> that issue. Yeah. Um, great, thank you. Okay, great. So we can just, uh, obviously a lot of more refinement uh, will happen. At the a, lot more, a lot more information yeah. has to be in there as well. Right? So, yeah, so. Okay, great. <coughs> So let's um, cross that off and then move back up the agenda to a discussion of capital requests that I believe was started at the last uh, meeting that, mm -hmm. I, that I missed. So we'll, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll keep going. Um, so basically, the, the, the sheet I you should have the little thing with the little, little box on it. All right, um, on there has the, the four main capital requests that we discussed and um, at the last meeting, this kind of this this now has come from Bob. I also asked Bob to give a list of you know the ongoing um, capital needs that we can are projecting off in the future. I mean, we have to get the numbers for those, but he doesn't have a strong number. If you go onto the third page after there, where he's got some stronger numbers, um, you know he's just he's creating an ongoing list. And and I really what I what I would like to see, and then the last page is um, is what we've completed recently. And I've asked him to start keeping a track on that because sometimes we knock off things and you say, well, what, whatever happened to it? And then you can kind of, I mean, people want to see, see where their done. money is spent as well. Yeah, absolutely. And I think long term, I'm looking over the finance committee, um, the members on the capital committee, that I mean, I'd like to see at least a I want to see a 10-year plan, but I want to see a realistic three-year plan so that planning can be made, and even a five-year plan that has some mobility as we, sometimes you have a change of needs, like we, we know we may have to replace something and it breaks, we, need, we, don't, we don't have the flexibility to say from one year to the next to skip a year within that plan, but I think we want to show more transparency and build that in the future so hey, this is what the school has that also can allow, I'm hoping that um, the capital committee can also look at it and say, you know what, not this year, but we can probably make a go for it next year and kind of can you guys make and have more communication around that rather than I know the past has been we got to get capital improvement quests in what do you think we can do I don't know let's throw the whole yeah. thing at them and see what they say exactly. you know that kind of thing and then it, it pits people in rather than I, I know that kind of I'm hoping for that kind of thing at least moving forward but at the, on the other end I also have to get um, you know Bob Lesko's got you know he's got five different schools, he's running these kind of lists on and um, <clears throat> running every which way trying to get those lists. So, but I do need to build that three-year list and get it um, to all of you. So that's kind of early in in my <clears throat> superintendency here to try and do right. that, That's why I'm hoping for long-term with the agreement of the committee. Yeah. <clears throat> um, so, but tonight, um, you know, we need to discuss what we'd like to send forward um, and understanding mm -hmm. that was, um, Clarified, reminded um, by Jeff over there regarding the floor upgrades was a three-year plan. Mm -hmm. um, it is in our top two in the sense of priority. Um, I would even maybe put it in front of the toilets as a priority because we kind of committed that we would turn over the carpets in the classrooms, um, doing about three a year, and that's where that eighteen um, thousand. And you were saying that's what it is seventeen thousand for the floor. Seventeen thousand for the floor. Right. So yeah. is um, already requested. That's already in the five-year plan. But that's for next year, or actually 2020 here. Yeah. So, because in essence, we this is something that we've done our list too. I didn't realize it was mm -hmm. already in there. Correct. In their sites, and in yep. essence, I knew we were doing this every year. So that's that rule. It is plan. the third year of a three-year plan. Yes. Two, two have already gone two. forward. This would be the third year, and also with the door hardware, there's 12.5 there for 2020. That's already going to be appropriated. And that is also a third installment of three-year plan. So that's 29.5 already. Well, it was approved three years ago, so yes. By us. 
and then um, that's all. What's the other one? Can yeah. I just ask a question about the floor? Uh, what was the other one? Was, I know he was. Uh, we had talked about doing the hardware. That hardware, hardware, that hardware the line has kind of What's the door? Okay. been a moving target a little bit, depending yeah. on what the needs were for security of the building. And I know you went through and did a bunch of keys and got like got rid of 20 keys and brought it down to three. Right. Um, but we're, you've been looking at doing key cards or fobs and stuff mm -hmm. for security of the buildings as well. And I just talked to Bob, um, I want to say a week ago, and he said that he has two uh, estimates in, and so they're looking at that, him and Scott Hall are looking at that. And I do believe that this money it actually is going towards some of that key cards because okay, good. Um, the door upgrades need to happen for the key cards. Right. I think we're pulling from that line now. Yeah. So I talked to Scott this morning. So I'll meet you there. All right, right. So um, and who's and Scott's our IT director is also him and Bob are working together on it because of the level of wiring and Correct. whether or not you're on networks and that kind of stuff with the key fob system. And so they are waiting for the third yep. um, bid to come in and then we'll be moving forward on that. So um, I think we're a little behind schedule, but they are the two of them working together on it. I have faith that we'll get that done this spring. Great. That's great. Okay, so is there a request for what for today, then, that you want the committee to vote on? Which requests are you looking for us to? I think we were going to prioritize a little bit, and I'm not mm -hmm. sure if this list has been prioritized, but I think the whole idea was to look at the list we got last. We got a list last meeting, and I don't know if you've seen that. I think you want here. Um, oh, you have it? Okay, great. So Ken and I were talking about... Um, at the Capital Improvement Planning Committee of kind of trying to narrow down something for them a little bit further on and talking here today, what we want to move forward with. Um, I just, I, you want to speak? Could I, go on, just a, a couple of quick questions. I mean, you've got four items here that you would prioritize for this year, if I understand this list, correct? It's a, that is the prioritized list. Right. However, we would probably move the flooring up since we already have the funding for that. Right. Right. Well, well, well we don't even need to. We can well, I wouldn't put the, the flooring was that was, was right. So was it's done. one. It's just done. It, it, well, yeah. and I agree, but I also. Yeah. Well, right. I did. I did not realize that there was twelve item door hardware mm -hmm. um, already kind of in the mm -hmm. like, in for twenty twenty. Um, but I had a question. The, the first item, toilet upgrades, it says here 15.3. What, what exactly is that? That's a restroom upgrade, I assume. You know what? Do you, I, I didn't talk to Bob. I think it's the, um, the double public bathroom over here, the boys. No, I didn't mean which bathrooms. What, what, in it? what specifically is going to be replaced? Partitions and floors? and floors. Because that, that number was originally 8,500 per, which would be 17,000. That's why I'm asking. Yeah. Um, right, because 8,500 per per bathroom to do it. So I think that the first time around it was a country. very rough estimate, and I know you've been talking. This to is the Bob. I think this is a refined. As of, to, okay, as so of that's, today, that's so a, yeah, a good number. Right. That that's. I just wanted to be clear. Um, as I looked at the list, <clears throat> all told is ninety-five thousand one hundred dollars. Outlined here that we'd like to get, you'd like to propose for 2020, FY20. Right? Correct. Um, okay, do we have a, a, are we, somebody giving us a limit or are we putting in our wish list? <laughs> we can, we can put oh, a list, list into the and Capital the Planning Committee who will then. Right, I think it's, Past judgment as well, right? And, it, and I don't because I don't. We don't have a scope of how much to ask for. I don't have a history of how much to ask for, other than having sat through many of the meetings and seen what's gone past me. But I also would love to if we if we prioritize them to what the schools' needs are. I mm -hmm. think that would be that way. Yes. Um, yes. If Absolutely. you suddenly came back and said we're not going to do the classroom floors, which I would say is the priority because. When we look at priorities, what affects, from my perspective, is what affects programming in the schools becomes number one. And if you have things that are working or broken, yeah. or students can't be in a space, that becomes a priority. Sure. And so, um, really, the flooring, it's a, you should finish up where we started and get those classrooms, mm -hmm. you know, um, yep. cleaned up and up to date. And I would put the toilets as, as number two. Yes. Um, because, um, again, let's not forget and the locks. 
And that's well, the locks are already on there. The locks are already on there. So, yeah. so, so we've um, got lock, floor, and <coughs> toilet. And toilet. So and that would say it's phase one. The other two yeah. is, the, is the next phase. Gym and the courtyard. Gym and the courtyard. Which we can, and I would say the gym would be a higher priority. Higher priority. The community the usage. Yeah. Not Absolutely. just the yeah. kids. And the, the condition community. that it's in right yeah. now is in really tough shape. Okay. May I? Yes. You may. Of course. Go ahead, Jim. Quickly. I'd like your idea as far as the school going through priority list. Uh, that'd be very helpful in <clears throat> as far as immediate need compared to what we're trying to do is a minimum of five year, five year plan. Mm -hmm. And as far as how much to request, that's all over the board. Mm -hmm. Some departments, you might end up with a $100,000 request one year. Next year, it might be zero for the same department. So it just depends on the needs and that. Unfortunately, I can't give you any specific numbers here because on our five-year plan right now, it's all over the board because we have a lot of unknowns. Uh, some of those unknowns obviously are the sewer, uh, you know, the request that's going to be coming from Frontier as far as their capital. We'll get the uh, time, by the way. Right, yeah. And then we still have, uh, you know, the senior center and the church and so on and so forth. So, uh, you know, unfortunately, I can't give you, uh, well, this is kind of like a cost average. I wish I could, but we yeah, just okay. we so, just yeah, can't with what we have. Give the our wish list in a prioritized order yeah. and estimated costs. Yeah. Right, and, and if you could give us a, an idea year-wise, yeah, running year-wise, so it's something that you need immediately, address it for FY, right. and if it's something that you feel you can put off for three years or five years, that would really be helpful. Okay, well, man, it sounds like from what I heard, that one more question. Okay. Of the four items, are there are there any that you have to have this year? Can you identify those? It sounds like the flooring upgrades. Here's what we're gonna. I hear you. That's, you'd like a list that's prioritized for what we would like. Well, you gave that. Right. But is there any like okay? All of them. It might be a priority, but we right. have to have this. Well, that would be the uh, which is. Toilets need to get working toilets toilet. for sure, and then the flooring, and obviously, because that's a no, I know, but they're going to do oh, they this is FY20, they're planning on that, and every year we have money this year to do flooring as well, so it's a constant, right? But that's I thought that was finishing it up. No, no I mean, it might no, be that's going to continue, it might have quite a few years, you might have toilet number two, but you have well, maybe there should be two number ones. <laughs> I guess. No you have to have. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I guess I'm not. Well, so the idea was I think the bathrooms, there's mo uh, every bathroom in this building needs upgrades, and we were going to start with those two and then, like the flooring, go year by year. Yeah. This year we do this, this year we do that, mm -hmm. this year we do that. Just break it up in smaller pieces instead of coming in and going, okay, we're going to go every bathroom this summer. That would fit well with the capital improvement plan, the five-year plan. Correct. And an extension to the yep. five-year plan is what we're trying to work on long-term also. And remember, the minimum the minimum has to be at least $10,000. For a request. Exactly. Right, for a request. And then the uh, flooring paper was um, this finishes that up, but then it's a it's going to be an on cycle because sure. Tina, there's probably how many? I mean, there's oh, yeah, yeah. No, there's quite well, a no, few rooms to go. Broke so. it. They keep yes. going. Yep, yeah. keeps going. Yeah, until we get those done. So just trying to be efficient. Since you guys had a meeting last time about all this stuff, right? Well, we brought you talk, the, you the, the list came meeting, up, but we thought up. we would go deeper. Bob into brought the, the list up, and we and and look at it. Get a prioritization okay. for this meeting. Okay, and then to the capital plan. <clears throat> right for for like the next year, but then I'm also hearing what we really should be doing is this five-year plan, mm -hmm. which we're totally not going to do tonight. Correct. No. Okay. So I think the goal for the committee now is to give a direction to administration to submit to the capital plan committee a list of our priorities mm -hmm. for this next fiscal year. Correct. Okay, that's what I'm just yep. going to come to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So not to be. Okay, but it sounded to me like the hardware and the flooring issues are clear, are sort of in the pipeline already for this year. And so that's already going to come from administration if we're going to do a list as priorities one and two. Yep. And then it sounded like we were saying toilet, gym, and then courtyard. Correct. So we don't need to start talking about all those other year rotating floors because that's going to gotcha. be part of a plan that's going to be put together. Correct. Okay. Gotcha. So I'm on, I'm on board with you. Okay. Yeah. 
So take okay. me so, so, okay. No, no, it's okay. <laughs> Just one more quick comment. And, yeah. And, uh, the committee, obviously, we're under a deadline. So the sooner the better with, with the request. Sure. Because we, so you know, we're, we're, we have a deadline we have to meet. <laughs> <laughs> the deadline is December 1st. <laughs> yeah, it was December 1st. Right, it was <laughs> December 1st. <laughs> the decisions are the hard part, getting it to you is not the hard part. So. <laughs> Okay. I'll try to get to you tomorrow. Okay. I'll give an email out, Ken, probably the following Wednesday. This Wednesday okay. is not going to work. All right. This then. coming Wednesday. So uh, just to get a sense as to when right. we it'll, might want to get it. It'll be to probably the day. following Wednesday. I'm sorry. Okay. So can I make a motion then? In whatever form we usually submit this to the Capital Planning Committee that we submit um, uh, direction from our administration to Capital Planning for what we've just outlined here, which is the hardware and the flooring and the toilet and the gym and the courtyard in that order and with the request for funding uh, that are associated with each of those projects. Second that. Okay. Any further discussion about that? Uh, sure, please. Discussion? Yep. Yes. I think it would be wise to list the why the request is being made. Mm -hmm not just the request of X amount of dollars for the court, courtyard. You, you need to explain what the problem is and what the re, result would be for the improvement. Yeah. There's an actual there request is. form, standard request form. Yeah. Trevor can get that for you. And as Bruce was saying, it, it helps that. You know, right. You, an explanation is, is requested so we can actually see the reason why. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Sure. Okay. Any further discussion? No? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. It's unanimous. Great. Thank you everybody for that. Thank you. And, uh, do we want to um, just a conversation, do we want to put together um, a small subcommittee to start working on that five-year plan? Or do we want to tackle that another night? I just want to, I don't want to lose sight and get to next January sure. when we should have had it in on, you sure. know, December 1st. Sure. I just want to kind of get rolling on. Oh, laying Ken, you're a member of this capital. I, I'm part of the capital yeah. planning. I, what I'd be happy to do is to try and take this, what we voted tonight. Yeah put it into a spreadsheet format, get it to Darius and Tina and Bob okay. as quickly as I can. Yeah. And um, do it, I'll do an initial attempt at it. Right, so, so <coughs> this, this, this second here. list. Um, <coughs> this one. Right. Right. The, the issue we have that Bob has with, we have a list of stuff that needs to get worked on. It, the, the problem that slows him down is he doesn't want to put numbers forward without having gotten those numbers from somewhere. I mean, he could do right. envelope estimates bending the business long enough, but he tries to get a little bit closer than that because he doesn't want to be 10,000 in the wrong direction. Right. You well, know what I mean? So just throwing out any number, but given the size of the project. So, I mean, I'm sure he could, you know, go through that list and have estimates, but until, and that's where I have problems where the three-year list is going to be a lot more accurate than the five-year list right. because right. just as going to say, Hopefully, whoever's on the committee has enough sense that it's a working document. Right. Numbers are going to change. Requests may change. You know, uh, you may have a five-year plan. And you might have to flip-flop two years because all of a sudden the need came up where it's an emergency now. Instead of and hopefully whoever's on that committee will be able to figure it out. And it's a working document. Right. That's the way I do it. Probably should be, well, obviously, it would be updated each year. Right. 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 Exactly. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The, the other issue with that plan is that, so you're looking at it as a capital plan, but we also, it's our plan of repair, so to right. speak. And so sometimes um, if there is, if there's, Excess money in the in a in a Indeed, you know let's yeah. say we have twelve thousand dollars left over and we have the next thing on the list to cost eleven thousand dollars we knock that off with yes you know with whatever um, 
you know, excess we have in the budget that yeah. we, you know, we try to knock off that list. So it's being hit from different angles. Yep. Um, I know we did well. the, the cafeteria tables that, like that one year. Like we had some extra and we figured, mm -hmm. let's do that. And right. Uh, so I'm just saying, so yeah. it is going to have to be a really yeah. live document Absolutely. and it's not, and then each year for capital improvement season comes through, we right. say, okay, these are the ones where we are on the, this is where we are on the list. Um, Maybe like a September meeting or October yeah. meeting, we do that so we get, you know, we freshen that list up and then get it to the guys early enough. Yep. It's one more. Uh, just a question relative to your budget. Do you have a maintenance line item in your budget? Uh, I think so. Yeah. Yes. yeah. And, it, and it's specific for certain items? Or is it just a dollar value? Items make up the dollars. But, but, but there actually, in other words, there's a maintenance plan to do certain maintenance in this fiscal year coming. Well, I mean, and your budget say, for that. I have to say, this is the first year that we're doing this. I understand. But, but typically, usually, there's some you know, large items you know you have to do that go in there, and then there's a certain amount that you know you're going to be spending for things that break and just general repairs yeah. and usually it's a combination of the okay. two. Mm -hmm. It's 27,800 for general general repairs and general supplies under maintenance of grounds and there's 11, another $11,000 set aside as maintenance of buildings and 6,500 for maintenance of equipment. Yeah, I just but didn't want to get behind the eight ball like we have in the past. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, the budget. We are many places. They've done a pretty good job on this building and trying to keep up, with, or we've done a yep. pretty good job. The administration's always been very conscious of mm -hmm. keeping the, you know, the, the main pieces in good shape. Good. I think we agree that it's in pretty good shape mm -hmm. in the building. So. <clears throat> okay, so I think the question before us right now is whether there's a need for this school committee to have a subcommittee dealing with capital improvements? Is that what you're questioning, Actually, we're just trying to figure out like who wants to, to jump on that to, I mean, I'm off, I'd offer to help here and there. I don't know how much help I'd be, but I, you know, just, I just always just try to keep push the, push the ball. I've met with Tina a bunch and then we got Bob in to look at the, you know, get the bathrooms on the radar because those are in really bad shape. So I don't know if that's, you know, I was just thinking maybe in September we looked at this again or over the, over the summer, we looked at trying to get, you know, I know we don't mean the summer, but, you know, later in the, in the spring, we look at this list again to get a little more accurate, look at it again in September, put something forward in October or December 1st, you know, start in sep September, October, so we can get it done by the 1st. And I don't know. So did I hear earlier, uh, Darius, that you were talking about putting together a plan? Uh, yeah, I mean, we already plan. have we have the bones of it, which you have kind of in front yeah. of you, and it's just about um, prioritizing, prioritizing it and monetizing. And, and yeah, and, and putting some numbers um, that we can. And even when we talk to putting the, the numbers next to it, maybe we can have asterisks next to one that says general estimate, absolutely firmer that, estimate. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so that people, yep. when they're looking at the numbers, they know. This is There's still some, needs some fine sure. tuning. We can relieve that fear. I know Bob has fear about putting numbers think, next to things and pr putting it out there without. I think everybody is this. sympathetic to his predicament. Of course. So pushing him yeah. to put numbers may be a no good word. idea because yeah. nobody's yeah. going to come back and get upset with him if his numbers. I think are we're sympathetic to that. Too. Right. That's right. what I'm here. Right. Right. We'll, 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 we'll give him the asterisks. You yeah. put an asterisk next to it. That means that it says it's a it's general a, right. knowledge right. estimate that carpeting costs much a square foot. Right. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. It would be it would be better to have the items listed even right. if they're five years out, six years out. Yep. And if you put a number there, as as you complete each year, as you go to put in your new request for the following fiscal year you would be asked to update, review your five-year plan, and see if any of those numbers need to be updated. Yep. So if you have to increase them or decrease them along the way, then that's fine. But at least, at least for planning purposes, the committee, uh, not only the Capital Improvement Committee, but the Select Board and the Finance Committee would be able to at least kind of anticipate our expenses going down the road. 
Yeah. 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 It's, it's, it's very similar to what we're doing at Frontier yeah. at the same time. That's been a ton of work and it, it's, it's a great model and yeah. I'd love to kind of just carry that throughout right. everywhere. But so why don't yeah, we just... We can wait on this so, next Yeah, why don't we wait on... It sounds like the administration is putting this together yeah. and at any moment that you want extra help or labor or input, we'll yes. ask you some of us to help join. We're happy to do that. Okay. Labor all the time. No, oh, yes, we have to do that. Okay. Good. Perfect. Thank you. All right. Moving on from uh, capital request substitute pay rate increase. Yes. Discussion item. Yes. So, um, where are we at? So the Massachusetts um, passed um, an increase in minimum wage um, starting January 1st. Our day rate for substitutes at the elementary school working a six and a half hour day falls just below $12 an hour. Um, and I have to say, I just spoke with our attorney today where it came out of the frontier conversation the other day that municipalities are not required to follow the law passed for minimum wage. However, um, I still think it's the right thing to do that our substitute teachers do not get paid below minimum wage when um, we say that we entrust our children with these people and that kind of thing. So I kind of put it out there um, that way um, there. But um, I've instructed already, thinking that the law pertained to us, that um, starting uh, January 2nd, um, substitute started working that um, it's $80 an hour and okay. we from 75 to 80. It does put us in line with most of the other schools around us. Per day. Per day. Yep. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry if I said that wrong. Yep. Um, <laughs> Just making sure. Yeah, yeah please. Um, <laughs> it's $80 uh, you know, for the daily stipend. Um, and that puts us, it puts us in more in line with what the other schools are doing. Other schools are making that change as well. That's kind of also how I got wrapped into believing that because they, what are you paying? What are you, everybody was comparing numbers and what they, sure. how they were addressing yeah. the minimum wage. And I think that um, while it may not be required to us by law, I think it's, you know, we're, we're uh, sure. I think we're moving with where our okay. community or state feels we should be moving within the pay, so. All right, so, so you're looking for a, a ratification of that decision and a yeah. vote to raise the pay rate of substitutes from $75 to $80 per day? That is correct. Okay. So moved to increase to $80 a day. Second. All in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you, Darius. Um, another discussion item is review of the enrollment report from NESDEC. Yeah. Um, so I sent out you all the NASDAQ um, reports. Again, um, when you look through them, um, and a NASDAQ report basically looks at the populations and trends in population and their level of accuracy has bounced around through the years. Sometimes they're right, and sometimes, I would say they're very much like the weatherman. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes they have an idea, they have a thing going in the right direction, sometimes they're not. And I think the one that resonates with me is when they talked about when Frontier had um, its latest renovation in 98, they said that the population was supposed to spike over, I'm looking at Mary because she was part of that, um, it was supposed to spike over a thousand students and it, it got up to seven something and then it's never gone any higher. So, um, so when you're looking at these, it is, it's informative. We're not making this, we're not basing decisions off these. Um, the trends I saw from Deerfield where um, we're seeing a slight rise in populations after some years of decline. Um, and the projected increase is slow but steady. Um, so when they say K through 12, um, you know, in 2018 of 523 students. Is that just um, like, we have about 400 here, and is that like uh, another 128 from Deerfield go to Frontier? Is that the idea? Yep, right. that they're, that's they're calling guess. out that. That would, that would make, gotcha. that'd make about sense since Deerfield's yep. about 50% of, right. um, that's that. The okay, year. yep, thank you. Um, I think anything after a couple years out on the projected, I, on every, I got a report for all five districts Mm -hmm. um, and they're all, they all do the same thing. They just kind of straight line out because they're, and it is know, really they're no one's really, they're not really telling us that kind of thing. I think it's, 
I mean, numbers are interesting in the sense of we, you know, looking at the trends in births, it's clearly going down in Franklin County. Um, you know, where is it going to keep going down? But it's not dramatic. It's like it was supposed to be a dramatic drop off, and we were looking at dropping, you know, we did the one year kindergarten and the school of choice and the whole, mm -hmm. and we thought this was going to be that major trend, and it really hasn't mm -hmm. proved out to be that. <clears throat> um, however, we've been fortunate being a school choice school. When we talk about that, when you make that statement within the valley, we are a popular school choice school in. Um, I thought, you know, I, um, it was mentioned that you know, we got to start looking at those numbers that do go out. There are schools that are upside down, mm -hmm. and um, mm -hmm. you know, they're seeing the exact opposite. Instead of 18 going out and 82 coming in, they're getting 82 going out and 18 coming in. And, and then so, the, other, <laughs> the other half of that, as we were doing this with, um, you know, it's not always great to get all those. I mean, we want to be a popular, we want kids to move here, not just come to school here. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so it's that balance between um, making sure we're not like funding a bunch of administration staff to, to educate the kids that are the kids what that are always saying? getting five thousand dollars per. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah, so I mean, it's school that, choices, it's happy balance. school choices is a happy balance. Okay? It is. And it really. When is. you're in the game, you have to play the game in the sense yes. that if you have eighteen kids going out, you better have eighteen kids coming in. Mm -hmm. um, the other side is, you know, the it costs. A dollar amount to run a classroom. Correct. Once you open the door, you have, I don't want to say three kids, but let's say you have 10 kids enter the classroom. Grab a it's couple. It's relatively more. the same cost to, to, for 20 students yes. in the classroom. Yeah. So, I mean, I know there's other costs that are associated with it, but and when, so when people talk about, you know, that kind of that formula, it's, it's yes. important to keep an eye on that. Yeah, it um, is. And it is. We've, we've done that calculus we have. here over the years. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. It's right. Yep. For several years back. Yeah. Yep. 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 Good. All right, great. The one thing that I noted, noticed in the numbers that, as they came to us, Darius, was that the kindergarten enrollment is tracking fairly closely to the birth rate in the town. Um, if you, there's a chart. Yes, it makes sense. I think it's the next to last chart. Um, yep. That uh, our kindergarten enrollment tends to be somewhere around 40. And the births in town tend to be somewhere around 40 to yep. 50 every year. And at 40, we're at a number that's, you know, just just a little too big to go down to two classrooms. Yep. Mm -hmm. And just a little too small to make some people feel like we're uh, providing too much of a perfect mixture of school choice numbers even out. And, and right. especially with the needs that yeah. you're seeing at those yeah. early ages. Yeah, if they mm -hmm. keep the classroom small with those mm -hmm. early ages. Then so it's, it amazing. hasn't afforded us the opportunity except for that one year. Which to really did do definitely created a ripple. We call that an afforded yeah. opportunity. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's been a challenge. a challenge. It's a challenge. Yeah. It is yeah. a challenge. It's moving through the ranks. Through. And yeah. space in the building. There's, mm -hmm. yeah, there's a lot of movement. So. Mm. Um, we got two people here that might want to hear that. So. <laughs> um, all right. Any the more? The will stay at where we're currently at with kindergarten and enrollments in the school. Yeah. Uh, that's the downside. The upside is that maybe there is some wiggle room on school choice. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Or continued wiggle room. Um, where it does provide an added value to the school. So. It's typically where we open the school for so mm -hmm. We don't usually have them in the upper grades. Right. So. I mean, we, I mean just in, as an example, when we talk of when with the smaller schools in our, in our district, we'll call it, um, where they said, oh, we had a family of five move in. Mm -hmm. Well, that's five slots that were school choice, that now you have to, sure. yeah, <laughs> it, it yeah, doesn't yeah. change the revenue so, other than the buying yeah. of the houses and, and those kind of things, but if you're yeah. moving into an apartment, it doesn't change the, the, the uh, money. Yeah. So it's a very, it's an interesting interesting game we're involved in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. <clears throat> All right, so I think that uh, moving on to reports, I have, we have nothing. Executive session. Well, we're getting there. Oh, okay. I have nothing to add. Collaborative has nothing to add. Principal support. 
Yeah, I'm going to keep it kind of short, let you guys read ahead, but I did want to highlight that the diversity leadership team, which is a student-led um, team, has come together to put in place a Martin Luther King celebration. Oh, nice. Um, yeah, on June 25th, the third um, through sixth graders will be watching the movie Ruby Bridges, and Pre-K to 2 um, has a art project around looking at skin pigments and the colors that make it up, and everybody's made from the same kind of colors and um, creating a bulletin board out of that artwork and then we're going to have an I dream, um, I have a dream wall, kind of like the teacher appreciation wall, I don't know if you guys remember that, mm -hmm. where we can continue yeah. the work with Martin Luther King. So. Nice. Yeah. Kudos to the diversity leadership team. Yeah. All right. All right. And to report. Um, just the, the continuation of, we have moved all the files out of Christian Lane, they are now at Frontier, they've been a closet there. Um, and they are currently the attorneys um, of all three sides of the town of Whitley School and the buyer are um, moving closer to putting a closing. So it looks like it's probably in probably two weeks that they'll be moving to close and move that building along. Um, negotiations have are underway. I just kind of gave you an, uh, for both groups, um, both Frontier and Union 38, and both groups within both Unit A and C and B. So you just kind of see where we're at. Um, so we just kind of, at this point, on the agenda, there is the um, ability to go to executive session sure, to discuss will. at any time we want an update yep. about how negotiations are going. So that will be on the agenda throughout the um, collective bargaining um, process. Right now, we've only had a meeting to discuss, you know, basically ground rules and setting up agendas for meeting dates moving forward. So. I have nothing of substance to report, but okay. if, if you want to go to executive session and talk about anything from anything within that in that thing, you're certainly more than welcome to do. I think after the sure. next meeting, I'll probably have something more of substance to, to report back to the group. Okay. Um, and then the um, business manager service was um, we did put that out the bid, and it was awarded to TMS. Um, they were the lone bidder, and um, and their rates were um, consistent with were. Um, Paying back, so we will be working with TMS through till the end of July through this bit. Wonderful. Thank Thanks you. for hanging around. Mark. Yeah. Thanks for having us. Right. Okay, so with that, um, does anybody would, it, would, you, would like to go to executive session? Or, or it sounds like it's going to be on here. No, no, no. no. And you're, you're basically saying if we had questions, but there's yep. really nothing to report. I, I, right, right, right. I have nothing to report unless there's, you know. Yeah. yeah. And if anybody has individual so, questions, you're always welcome to call me. But as a group, I would say the net, it's going to be on there because you have the yes. right. No, 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 absolutely. You know, as a group, you really yep. should have the right to, in every meeting to sure. get an update and if we yeah. have to yeah. do so. But given the, given the tenor of your report generically, I don't see a need, but yeah. I'm happy to go. I, I don't recommend it needs, that you need to okay. go to. Okay. 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 All right. You're welcome to do whatever you want. Okay. <laughs> um, so on that, I think we've um, come to the end of our meeting. Yeah. Unless anybody has anything else, make a motion to adjourn. Well, oh, do you have just one? Yeah, um, I think we are scheduled for a joint school committee meeting on the 22nd, 22nd of January. Correct. Yes. An agenda for which will be coming out shortly. It is. Yeah. yeah. Um, I just wanted to remind people to keep that placeholder there. Yes. Yes. <clears throat> yes. Thank you. Looking forward to it. Mm -hmm. Motion to adjourn. All right. And a second. Thank I you. second. Thank you. Second to all in favor. Aye. 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 Great. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you.